Okay, so yeah, I'm going to talk about this uh, this brand new feature that we have that's in uh, both open source uh, community edition of Hasura and um, and also in uh, Hasura Cloud, of course, um, where if you uh, if you do use this uh, feature from Hasura Cloud, um, you'll have all the regular REST endpoint features that I'm about to show, uh, but you'll also have some of the um, the Hasura Cloud features that augment it, such as caching, that fit really nicely with uh, with REST endpoints as well. We'll try and show as well. Okay, so as Vish said, what we're really trying to do here um, is keep all the rapid prototyping benefits that we get with GraphQL. Um, so you know we can um, we can take a a rough API in the form of um, in in the case of Hasura, obviously like a, a Postgres database, um, and turn it into exactly the API we want during client side development. Um, for prototyping purposes, pair down the selection sets to exactly what we need, get the performance we need, all those sorts of things. We have this great development workflow for GraphQL. Um, but at the same time, REST has been around for a long time and it has a great range of tooling um, and benefits that perhaps uh, we don't get with GraphQL in some cases. So <clears throat> if we're in production, for example, and we're not in this prototyping mode, um, one thing that's preferable is this client server architecture we get with REST where the server um, can lock down the uh, the API to the client and say this is only you know you no longer have the freedom to pick the selection set that you want and expand the set of things. Um, this is this is the only set of data that you're getting for security reasons and what have you um, to restrict that to the client for production. Um, another benefit of REST is that um, we have great support in in browsers for client side caching um, and at CDN boundaries and these sorts of things, for example, because um, our queries can all go. Uh, over HTTP GET requests, which naturally support caching. Now, of course, you know there's some things um, in Apollo and various, uh, you know, other um, extensions to the GraphQL spec. So GraphQL queries over GET um, in Apollo, for example, that that we're aware of. But um, this is something that sort of falls out naturally from REST, um, and it's sort of such a natural fit that it sort of makes sense to say, let's take our GraphQL. Um, queries and mutations after we're done prototyping and just uh, freeze them into a REST API and get all these benefits for free. Now we already have caching, of course, on the server side. Um, that's a an automatic benefit of Hasura Cloud. Um, uh, this client side caching will fit naturally with that in the sense that the directions we send via cache control headers to the, to the browser um, will instruct the browser to expire its caches at the same time that the the server caches in Hasura would expire anyway. So there's a natural uh, integration there, which is great. Um, so as I say, we get the best of both worlds. We want to do development and prototyping using all the flexibility of GraphQL and then freeze a version of the API um, as a set of REST endpoints in production. Um, and what we really want to do here is have our GraphQL queries and mutations become uh, idiomatic REST endpoints in as much as is possible. Okay, so. Um, with REST, we want to name resources, we want to identify resources and the, the verbs that we want to perform against those resources. And as I'm going to show in the demo, we can use URL templating, which is basic right now. This is a you know, relatively experimental new feature, but um, it's something that will uh, will expand over time. We have this URL templating feature to allow us to name these resources and use GraphQL variables for placeholders in those URLs. Um, all sort of popular content types, that's JSON and URL encoded content types are gonna be supported. It's another idiomatic REST feature. Caching, as I already mentioned, is, is gonna come as a default feature. We have this cached directive in uh, Hasura Cloud that uh, integrates really nicely uh, with, uh, with, with the REST features. And um, GraphQL errors, which are not uh, sort of a natural, uh, don't map naturally onto um, a, 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 the rest idiom are going to be mapped onto HTTP status, HTTP status codes um, to make that those into uh, idiomatic HTTP errors for things such as, for example, 404 not found or um, method not acceptable, content type not acceptable, these sorts of things. Um, so I'll give a quick demo. Um, I'll show how we can take some existing uh, GraphQL queries and turn them into REST endpoints. Everything I'm going to show is going to be driven by metadata because, um, this, as I said, this is an experimental feature. The UI isn't uh, implemented at the moment, but I'm going to be able to show some mockups of what this might look like um, in a final version for release. Um, but in the 1.4 release uh, that's coming up, as Tamai mentioned, this is uh, going to be something you can try. 
It's just going to be something that's uh, restricted to uh, our metadata format, and I'll show you how you can use it. And for future work, there's, there's a lot of directions we can take this in. Um, queries and mutations, for example, are a natural fit for REST, but subscriptions, maybe not quite so much. Um, so we, we've looked at um, you know, WebSockets are, are the natural choice, given that they're so uh, ubiquitous for subscription implementations in GraphQL, but um, something like uh, server sent events uh, could be another option that we would look at for, um, for a sort of natural REST equivalent to subscriptions, if you like. If we, were, if we were to extend it in that direction. Um, another direction to take this is better support for error and output mapping. So we could say, for example, um, to look for certain error conditions that would be reflected in the GraphQL output in certain nested fields, for example, um, and to map those onto specific error codes. And there's a lot of, uh, a lot of options there. Um, we'd like to support graphical integration so that as we're doing this rapid prototyping, we could press a single button and get um, a REST endpoint immediately that's, that's ready for testing. Um, and otherwise, uh, let us know what you'd like to see in an ideal REST integration with, with GraphQL. And um, we can try to incorporate various things onto our roadmap as, as we get feedback. OK, so that's the overview. Let me dive in and give this demo. Um, what I have is a, oh dear, sorry. I'm going to have to leave that there. It's interacting strangely with my Zoom meeting. OK, uh, what I have here is. Um, the uh, Chinook, a copy of the Chinook database that I use for a lot of demos. Um, it's albums, tracks, and artists of a sort of music catalog. Um, and I've written a selection of GraphQL queries over here uh, and a couple of mutations. So here's a GraphQL query that gets all of the albums um, with pagination. Uh, and I'm trying to demonstrate a few features here. So um, it's not the smallest query in the world, but uh, we can see a few things. So we have, um, we're pulling all the albums with a limit of 50 from an offset that's provided, provided by a parameter with a default value of zero for pagination purposes. We're going to order by the ID. Um, and then we're going to pull in with joins the artist and then via an array relationship, all the tracks for uh, this album, only if um, this include tracks parameter is set to true, which currently defaults to false in the parameter list. Um, another example is to get an album by a single ID. So I have an integer as the primary key here, and this query is almost identical, um, except that I've removed pagination, of course, because I'm only getting a single result anyway. Um, and I'm doing, I'm using the sort of standard query that we have in Hasura called uh, you know, entity by primary key, uh, instead of getting all of the entities. And I'm passing in this parameter here uh, to specify which primary key, uh, the primary key of the entity I want to pull. Pardon me. Um, for mutations, I have a couple of um, demonstrations. I have an update and a delete. Again, these are just mapping straight onto standard mutations from Postgres that we're providing in Hasura. And it bears mentioning, you know, these are these are standard Postgres features that we have, um, standard Postgres GraphQL features. But all of this REST um, endpoint feature functionality works just as well with uh, remote schemas, actions wherever you may be getting your, wherever you may be joining your data from, you can map a REST endpoint onto it right now. Um, it's just that a lot of the relational um, operations, CRUD operations map really nicely onto uh, REST endpoints for a demo. So I'm showing here uh, reading updates and deletes. Okay, so to update an album, the only update I'm supporting here to lock this down is, uh, is to, to update the title, which I'm gonna specify as a parameter. And I give the primary key as well, and then I use the standard mutation. Uh, and to delete, um, I don't have, uh, this was the last one I wrote, and I, I did it quickly. So what I did, because I had a foreign key and I didn't set it up properly, I, I, I do the sort of cascade by hand. So I just do delete tracks and delete the album uh, with the primary key. But we could do this with a function or a couple of other ways. Um, OK, so, so here we can see the result. This is fairly self-explanatory, I hope. Uh, let's see how we map it onto um, REST endpoints in the metadata. So here's a copy of the metadata YAML um, that I have for this server that's running right now. Um, if I scroll down here, this is the interesting part. So you'll see the queries that I just, um, that I wrote in GraphQL copied into the YAML here. And when we have GraphQL integration, this should hopefully be a, a one-click integration to get this into the YAML file. Um, I have a query collection with an arbitrary name 
and the set of queries inside that query collection. So this, this query collection feature is something that already exists in the metadata. It's, uh, it's used to power some other features and we're reusing it for rest, uh, rest endpoint collections. Um, nothing to see here really because everything uh, here is already queries that you've already seen. But when we come down to the bottom here, we have a new section called rest endpoints. And this will provide the mapping, uh, URL templating methods uh, defined for each endpoint mapped onto those queries that I just showed. So for example, if I do a get request on, on the albums resource, then that will get mapped to the, this query collection entry, get albums, which was the first query that I showed to get all of the albums with pagination. Now exactly how that, that works with um, the various variables I need to show. Uh, the next one, if we have a resource with uh, the ID, we can map that onto this URL. And you see, this is where the, the URL templating comes into, into play. So I can take this ID and map that second component, that second segment of the URL onto the ID. And that, that ID is going to be read out of that segment. So if I go to album slash one, for example, it will bring me back the, the album with the primary key one. And for mutations, I can specify methods such as puts, for example, for an update, or delete for a delete. Um, and I can do the same URL templating uh, and map those onto those mutations. OK. Uh, so hopefully this is pretty self-explanatory. I just need to say what, what happens with the variables. Um, so in our queries, we had um, strings, integers, booleans. Those are going to get mapped onto query. If they're not already um, inferred from the URL templating, like this ID is, is here, they're going to be pulled in from uh, query arguments. So if I go over here, I'm just increase the font size a little. Um, this is an example of uh, going to the, the album's endpoint. Um, and I can add that include tracks boolean here, whoops, uh, to pull in the track information as well. Okay, or I could do an offset. I could pass in the offset here as well and start from entry number 50. So, so variables can be injected into GraphQL queries via the REST API, via either the URL templating or query arguments. And also in the case of mutations, we can, act, we can also pass them in uh, via uh, the, the request body, which allows us in the case of um, let's say an insert mutation to do a bulk insert where we pass in an array of JSON objects that uh, correspond to the rows that we want to insert. Okay, so there's three ways then that we can do variable interpolation. Um, URL templating, query arguments, and the request body. And just to demonstrate that this actually is functional, aside from get, so I just put together a very quick demo here to pull, um, if, I, uh, if, I do, if I scroll through here, I set up a sort of infinite scrolling setup where it will do the it will, it will load data from the server using that pagination uh, feature that I showed. Um, and then if I, so for example, I have a, a, a typo here in the, the title of this album, so I can uh, use a mutation to, uh, oh, the, uh, the pop-up isn't working, unfortunately, because uh, I'm in full screen mode. Um, but sorry about that. If I were to demo that, you would see, uh, I could correct this title. Um, and you would see the caching happening where uh, it would take, where the caching would clear after a couple of seconds. But I'm actually going to skip that little bit of the demo because uh, I can't do it in full screen mode like this. Okay, so I'm just going to skip ahead and show this quick mock up of the, uh, uh, what we might see in the future for UI here. Um, as I said, you can use metadata today, but ultimately we want to turn this into a, uh, an, a UI feature in, in the Hasura console. Um, and uh, Martin on the design team has, has, uh, has come up with this nice mock up of, of how, this, how this could look. Um, so we'd, we would have a, a list of REST endpoints in the console. Um, and for each one, we would see a summary. So here's the, the resource, the URL, um, the URL template. Um, here's the methods that could be associated and, and used for writing on that resource. And in each case, we can see um, here's the GraphQL query or mutation that gets mapped onto this. Um, and if we uh, so we can edit, for example. Um, oh, sorry. Once again, it's integrating poorly with my Zoom meeting. Maybe I can click through here. There we go. Uh, if we click through, we can see um, we have a tool here that we'd like to build to uh, test this endpoint right there in the console. Um, and we can see other information about sort of the error handling mode and various um, parameters for how we map GraphQL onto this REST endpoint. Um, so hopefully that gives a quick uh, overview of what you can expect in the next few releases. Um, but right now, you can go ahead after the 1.4 release and, uh, and use this now if you, uh, if you can do what I showed and, and import this um, via the metadata. 
and you can find documentation in the in the docs that will be released soon uh, on docs.hosera.io uh, that will walk through the the various operations you can do to set this up and and the format of the metadata and that kind of thing.